Welcome to Let's Build This, where we explore building out this airplane for the backcountry. In this video, we're gonna talk through why I designed this new rudder, and I'll show you what my workflow is for reverse engineering and designing new parts, as well as the software that I use. At the end, we'll explore some goodies that just arrived and some of the carbon fiber work that I'm starting on. So let's jump into it. Welcome to Let's Build This. My name is David, and I love to design, build, and fly. Join me as we discover those three areas and more. All right, so my reason for designing a new rudder for this is that the tail feathers on the Avid Flyer are a little bit on the small side, and with slower flight, you can actually lose authority with the rudder or the elevator. If you look at the Kit Foxes, they've solved this problem on the later models by enlarging the tail. The second part of improving this is I want to make the rudder a balanced surface so it just makes it a little bit nicer while flying. And the third reason is that I've never loved the way that the tail looks on the Avid Flyer. Now admittedly the Mark IV is the best looking out of all of them but I still think it could be better. All right now let's talk about my workflow for designing new parts. So the first thing I do is take one or more images of the parts that I want to improve and I also take a measurement of all critical dimensions. In this case on the rudder, I measure the length of the tail post. I then take the images into a vector-based software. In my case, I use Adobe Illustrator since I've used that tool for over 14 years. So the first thing I do is get the image size so it's matched up perfectly with what the critical dimensions are that I measured out before. If I took the measurement in inches, I'll make sure to match that correctly when setting up the image in Illustrator. I then create the vector shape and I try to use as few of points as possible so that the CAD software has an easier time with it. And once I've got that looking the way I want that to, I export the file as a DXF file. I then go into Fusion 360, which is now called Fusion. I insert the DXF file, making sure that the unit type matches what was set in Illustrator so that the scale is correct. From here, I select all the surfaces that I want. I extrude them so that I have a solid part to work from. I then take the pipe tool and select an edge that I want to be tubing. I create all the various tubes all around the rudder. I add some cross bracing. And in this example, I'm adding some streamlining ribs to make the tail surfaces more aerodynamic. So I just drew this up quickly to convey the idea. I'm gonna refine this some more, and I still need to decide how I'm gonna manufacture these. It's easy enough for me to cut these out of aluminum on my CNC, but the Bearhawk uses steel ribs that are welded in place as part of the support structure. So I probably will go that route. And especially since I need the balance part of the tail to handle the bending moment placed on it, I need to make sure that's nice and strong. I'll also be making these changes to the horizontal surfaces. This is a quick mock-up of the new design, but it still needs some more refinement. The intention is to have it both aerodynamically balanced as well as mass balanced. So this is the shape I came out with. I think it looks pretty nice. It's 20% larger and I'll add some weight to make it mass balanced as well. My hope here with these improvements is that I get a slight increase in airspeed, better handling in the slow speeds, and just a nicer aesthetic overall. I'm not dead set on this design. If you have any feedback or comments, drop it down below. And one quick note, I don't just look at the airplane and think, oh, what should I improve on it? I read and I study and I research and I look at the different things that people talk about or complain about. In fact, some of these adjustments actually make the airplane safer. And so when you think about it, it's like, oh, people get away with flying it kind of in that version. But actually, when you make that improvement, it actually makes the airplane safer. So that is part of my decision-making process in this, just a small part of it. You know, you don't want to take this lightly. I mean, this is experimental aviation. Of course, you can make tweaks and adjustments. You have to go out and validate and test those adjustments. And you shouldn't take it lightly. We need to make sure this is done safely and correctly and following best practices. All right, so the last thing I want to show you is some supplies that arrived today. I got a couple rolls of this two by two weave of carbon fiber, the two part epoxy, the pale ply and tape, this fabric. A couple pieces that I'm interested in making up front is this baggage area. I mocked this up in cardboard to get started. Normally the baggage area is this panel and this panel, and then there's a flat panel right here. And so you kind of just have this upper section, but I'm actually gonna expand it and use this lower section down in here. I'm gonna reshape this bottom piece to be more of a tunnel shape. 
Then I'll move this trim cable over to be inside that tunnel. The tube will be there for fishing poles or other long items. The plan is to make this fishing pole holder out of carbon fiber. I'll wrap the end so there's nothing dangling out of it. And then on the top end, it will be a little bit bigger so that the reel can fit in there. And the plan is to make the seat fold forward so that I can access this through the seat. I'm also thinking about making a mold for the panel. So if that's something that you're interested in, or if you want to see other parts made, drop a comment below. All right, my hope here with this video and this channel is that you'll see that you don't need a huge budget to get involved in aviation. And if you have a vision for what it is you want, I promise that as you work hard and you overcome those challenges, you'll be able to fulfill what your goals are. So I hope that that inspires you. This is probably a good spot to wrap this one out. If you haven't already, please like this video. Please subscribe. I'll be in Oshkosh for the next couple of days. So if you're out there, hit me up. And if you're looking for the next content, you can find it either here or here, or it's coming soon. Till the next one, we'll catch you later.